Okay, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at how we send the player's position and input across the network in the Fish Game project. So let's open up our project and let's go into our players folder here. And we're going to come into our network local player. Now you can see here that we've got a few things here. We've got our player input controller. Let's just quickly dive into that. Let's pull the code over. And you can see that none of this is related to networking whatsoever. So I'm not going to dive into the entire specifics around how input works for each particular character. However, you can see that all of this code here is basically setting some values at the top here, which are public values. We've got access to our horizontal, our jump, whether or not the jump is being held, the attack key, and whether or not any inputs have changed in between each frame. So as a component, this is exposing all of that information that we then use in our other component here, the player network local sync. Let's dive into that. So inside this script, we have a few things that are going on. The first thing is our state frequency. And you can see here it says how often to send the player's velocity and position across the network in seconds. So this is default in here to 0.1 second, so every tenth of a second. However, if we come back into this, you can see that I've actually updated that to be 0.05, so every fifth of a second. I found that value just seemed to work a little bit better, but you could add something like this and play with it yourself to see what works for your game. Let's go back into the script here. You can see we've also got a reference to the game manager. We have access to our player's health controller and their input controller. We've also got access to their rigid body and their transform. And we also have a value here that is the sync timer, which basically just keeps account of how long has passed since we last sent a state update across the network. And if it's past the threshold of this state frequency, it's gonna trigger that to send another network message. So let's come back down here in our start script. We're basically just getting access to all of these components. And then we're using the late update function to send these network requests. The reason we're using late update is that we do all of our updating in the update function for the positions and velocity and things like that. And late update basically runs after all of those have completed. So we wanna make sure that we've got the very latest information before we send that across the network. You can see here that the next thing we do is we're basically checking whether or not our state sync timer has elapsed. Now, again, this is a pattern that you'll probably see quite frequently in Unity. It's not something I'm gonna dive into here, but it basically just allows us to keep a counter of something by subtracting delta time from it. And whenever that time has elapsed, we're basically gonna reset it to the state frequency, and it's just gonna allow us to send that on a regular basis. And what we're actually doing here is we're getting the game manager to send some match state. Now, the reason I've got this in here is just an easy way to access the Nakama connection. The other way you could do that is you could specifically pass in that Nakama connection scriptable object to this player network local sync. So let's just dive into this function here. You can see all it's doing is passing that request straight through with no modifications whatsoever. So again, like I say, you could just pass that through as a scriptable object dependency. But in this instance, we're using the game manager to access that. We're gonna pass in an opcode here, which is velocity and position. Let's dive into that here. And you can see that the opcodes enum that I talked about in the previous video, I've gone with a very similar concept here, except I've gone with a class with a bunch of constants in here. So we've got our velocity and position is one, input is two, the died event is three, respawn is four, and new round is five. Okay, so we're sending our opcodes dot velocity and position. And then we've got this match data JSON dot velocity and position function, and we're giving it our rigid body's velocity and our transforms position. Let's just dive into this function here. And you can see we've got a whole class of helper functions here that basically take some variables and they format them into a JSON string. So we've got this dictionary of string keys and values here. We're sending our velocity.x, velocity.y, position.x, position.y, and we're turning that whole dictionary into a JSON string. Now this to JSON function is actually an extension that's provided by Nakama in their SDK. You just need to include the nakama.tinyjson reference at the top. 
And then you've got access to turn a dictionary into a JSON string, which is extremely handy. So we're turning these two vectors here into a JSON object. And then we're simply passing that across the network by sending a state message. The other thing we're doing here is we're saying if the player's input hasn't changed, then we're simply going to return early. And otherwise, if it has changed, then we're also going to send that across the network as well as an input state. So there's two things going on here. There's one, we're sending a complete state of this player, their current velocity and their current position. We're basically saying every 0.1 of a second or a fifth of a second in this instance, we're saying this is the current position and velocity of this player. Go and update your games to match that. And in the next instance, what we're saying is every single time the input has changed, we're going to send that out across the network as well. So we're going to say, hey, go and send out that my horizontal input is this. I'm jumping or I'm not jumping. I'm either jumping and holding the key or I'm not. And I'm attacking or I'm not attacking. These are all Boolean values here. So every time the user changes their input, we're sending that entire input across the network so that all of the clients can try and keep their games as up to date as possible with what's happening with each individual player. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how we actually go and receive these messages and handle all of the prediction and interpolation of remotely connected players. I'll see you in the next one.